Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and this is my latest tutorial. This is part two of my dungeon making series. And in part one, you see we made the dungeon floor, the terrain. And in part two, this video, we're going to make a bunch of uh, the walls. And uh, this is a lot of fun, really easy to make. You use foam you can buy at a home improvement store for 11 bucks and it'll give you a whole lot of terrain that you can train parts wishing wells sarcophagi anything all kinds of stuff you can put and the dungeon is all modular so you can move those walls around and have a different dungeon every time you play fun little project really cheap easy to do Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. Okay, so let's take a look. This is what I made, and I only used half the foam that I, that I bought at the home improvement store. But look, you can do a bunch of different things. We'll take a look at a few of the different walls. You can just keep them flat black. You can spackle them. Right? Doesn't that look good? And you make them different sizes. You can cut doorways in them. And you can have doorways with removable doors. You're only limited by your imagination. The important thing is, I guess, is to make them um, in uniform in terms of, look, there's a bridge, a little well, the sarcophagus, and lava. Right? A lot of fun stuff. The only important thing is to make them... I guess, and it isn't that important, to one and a half inch increments, just like the blocks, your, your grid pattern. And you can also make covers for various rooms of any size so you can hide what's inside from players. See, there's a nice little cover I made for a room. So you just need some basic supplies, the foam that we purchased for the part one, uh, a sheet of foam board, which will cost you a buck in the dollar store, Walmart sells foam board, but look, that's we make our bases like that. And see how it's two segments, two grid squares in length. This one's four grid squares in length. Make yourself a variety of them. Make some twos, make some threes, make some fours, you know, make some sixes. We're going to cut the foam, cut the foam board, glue them together, and you have your walls. And my walls are two and a half inches tall. But look, I'll show you some different things. Like you can make brick. You can make stonework. You can make Tudor style. Or you can paint patterns and symbols and stuff on the walls. Easy to do. Fun project. Okay, so cut your foam board to the sizes desired. And make a whole bunch of these walls. So you can have all different types of dungeon layouts. This particular one is one and a half inches wide and it's six inches long. And cut off the corners because that allows them to assemble, you know, closer to each other when they're on the dungeon terrain, on the dungeon uh, floor plan. But there you go. And then cut yourself out foam to match it. Like I said, it's two and a half inches tall and the length of this one is six inches. The foam is one inch thick. There we go. We've got our first wall segment. A little bit of sandpaper helps. You can sand it down to smooth things out. Then simply glue them together. And I love, for a lot of arts and crafts projects, uh, beacon glue. You know, Beacon makes a few different types of glue, like the three-in-one glue. It's really good because it has, it, it adheres to a bunch of stuff. It adheres to foam, but it adheres to paper, it adheres to foam board. It has a good tact to it. So it has a good stickiness, which I really like about Beacon glue. Get yourself some Beacon three-in-one. Now I recommend if you do something like this with a doorway, see how there's only a, the doorway, this segment can be weak and easy to break because there's only a little bit of foam at the top of the doorway, you know. When you um, glue it to the base, 
cut the base like you see there. Cut out the foam. It makes for a nicer transition. Cut out the foam, but leave one sheet of the bottom sheet of paper in that one segment. And you can do double doorways and triple doorways and whatever whatever you want. But see, now that has a nice transition. So characters can walk across it. And just a thought. But you've still got added strength. So one of the nice things I like about this foam is it's uh, you can make nice indents in it, which gives you texture on your in your dungeon walls. So you can do, you know, use a ballpoint pen. You could even use, um, probably could use a toothpick or a gel pen to indent patterns. And that'll come in handy later when we uh, use dry brushing. Watch, I'll show you here. And then when you want to paint it, paint it flat black and get the black into those um, indents you made. And then once it's dried, you can dry brush it. That's the technique of using just a little bit of white paint or gray paint dabbing most of it off on a rag and then lightly and quickly brushing over. So what happens is the little bit of paint is put on the high spots but doesn't get down into those indents. See, it looks good. That's dry brushing. I showed you this more in depth in part one of this tutorial because our uh, dungeon terrain is dry brushed. But you know, experiment. Have some fun. Be creative about this. You know, make any kind of dungeon walls you want. There were some great comments in the last video and I want to thank you the people that commented on how to um, make different types of dungeon stuff. Some really good ideas. See there we go, I'm dry brushing the stonework. You can do it light, you can do it heavier. So those stones will really pop if you keep doing it. But I'm just going to go light here. You know, I had fun making this dungeon. It's just so inexpensive to make. And you can have all of this done in no time at all. I, you know, like one day. And don't forget to paint the base. Uh, you could keep it white if you wanted. I, I think it looks better if you gray out the base. It keeps more in line with the dungeon. And then once everything dries, seal it. Mod Podge works great for this. You can use just about any type of Mod Podge. I like the gloss for this, but the matte if you don't want, so, want it so shiny. And if you don't have Mod Podge, go ahead and mix white glue, that's PVA glue, 50-50 with water and use that. And that will seal it. And this, this is to seal it and strengthen it, just like we did on the surface of the dungeon. So there we go. We made a whole bunch of walls. I made other things like I showed you the bridge and the lava and the sarcophagus and the um, fountain. But the thing about it is, you know, you can move this stuff around. Lay out the dungeon one way, move the walls, you know, lay out the dungeon a different way so you've got a different dungeon. And different accoutrement too, different little accessories. So that's it. Send me a picture. Um, subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm nearing on 100 million views, and uh, uh, and and let me think. Uh, I'm close to a thousand videos now. And okay, so the next video in this series, I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to make an animation here. So I did a quick little stop motion animation of dungeon adventurers journeying into this dungeon, and there's a story. So the next video, I will tell you the story. You'll hear the story, and you'll see how little dungeon adventure is traveling through the dungeon. And little do they know that, of course, uh, you know, danger lurks. Thanks. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.